Hello, my name is Katherine Moore, social worker, mom, coffee lover, and founder of Social Workers Rise, where we inspire social workers to connect, expand their knowledge, and change more lives than they ever thought possible. I'm so excited you found my podcast. We will talk everything social work on every level from micro to macro. We will hear the stories of social workers who are doing big things, learn new skills, and most importantly, give you actionable steps to make a difference today. Let's go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Social Workers Rise. It is your host, Catherine here. This week, I'm sharing with you real questions that were asked in an interview. These are going to help you just think about your own situation, your own responses, and really help prepare you for an interview whenever that happens for you. Next, after those, we're going to talk about questions that you need to be asking of your interviewer to help identify if this is a good work environment for you and how to identify some possible red flags of toxic work environments before it's too late, before you get into the job and have to find out the hard way. So hoping to save you a lot of grief and time with these questions. Also, I am really excited to announce that I'm now offering coaching for social workers in the areas of career coaching, wellness, and creating balance. So if that is something that interests you, tap the link in the show notes. And at the end, I'll be going into a little bit more detail about what that looks like. For now, we're going to listen to a short ad from our sponsor, The Rise Directory, and get right into it. This episode is proudly brought to you by The Rise Directory, a national directory of clinical supervisors who are dedicated to helping the next generation of clinical social workers grow in their clinical skills. The link is in the show notes. Check it out and tell every clinical supervisor you know about this directory. Hello and welcome to another episode of Social Workers Rise. It is your host, Catherine here. This week, we are talking about interview tips, and this is a part two, if you will, to the episode from last week with Lori Elderson, and she talked about her interview tips from the perspective of someone who actually does the interviews. So we want to know how do we show up confidently to the interview That's what we talked about last week, and she gives us her five tips. This week, I'm taking a step further, and I wanted to share something with you that I haven't shared publicly before, and these are the interview questions that I was asked when I was interviewing for LCSW telehealth positions, and I wanted to share these because we are so often just trying our best to prepare for the interview, to do everything that we possibly can to, you know, get questions that we might anticipate they ask, to have some answers ready so that we feel confident. And these questions really illustrate that it can be anywhere. It can be anything. You just have to really, really do your best. So I wrote these down because I I thought they were different, you know, different than what I was finding online and what I had traditionally trained for. So here we go. Let's just hop into the questions. Uh, And these were taken from two different companies for the same type of LCSW telehealth position. Tell me about your experience as it relates to this position. Again, you need to know the job details in order to speak educatedly about this question. What is your primary theoretical modality? I was actually kind of impressed that they asked me this, but it makes sense because they're probably going to put it on their website and they want to make sure that my theoretical modality maybe is, is a good fit compared to the other team or is a good add. Maybe I'm going to be that added, um, that added theoretical modality that they're missing, right? 
if you need a refreshment on theoretical modalities, one, we definitely cover this in the Clinical Essentials for the Future Therapist virtual course. We talk about how to find your theoretical modality. But just overall, these are going to be the things that we learn in grad school, such as person-centered theory, ego psychology, family emotional systems theory, cognitive behavioral theory. What else? We have narrative theory, motivational interviewing, also crisis theory and intervention, short-term solution-focused therapy, things like that. Those are going to be your, your theoretical modalities. And with that, you don't have to only use one. A lot of times therapists, they might specialize in one. They might pick one, right? Maybe they want to be specialized in DBT, dialectal, dialectical behavioral therapy. And so they'll take a lot of courses and, and invest in themselves professionally in that modality. But you can pull from other modalities too. So you don't have to pick one. That's why they ask for primary. So moving on, how would you handle tech problems such as poor sound, video, or the internet dropping? How comfortable are you with filing an APS and CPS report? What population do you enjoy working with the most and why? And conversely, what population do you least enjoy working with and why? I found this least enjoy working with to be tricky because we don't want to talk bad on anyone. But let's face it, a lot of most of us do have our favorite people. If we've been doing this for a while, which if you're an LCSW, you probably have. Even if you've even going through through grad school, you might have a population that you do enjoy really working with and when not so much. So for me, I did enjoy working with the children. However, the parents, oof, not so much. Not so much. Parents are difficult. <laughs> But I love the children. Um, but overall, I mean, I just love the older adults. They're my faves. So that is what I would say, you know, to those questions. And then this is a perfect, a perfect lead way into, into saying, you know, why and illustrate this with a story. You could even get personal. You know, I, I always say that I was raised by my grandmother and she was amazing. And so working with older adult population is just comes natural to me. I find it easy to connect with them. I'm very patient. I find it enjoyable to to help them. I I love their stories. I love their wisdom. I love to listen. So, you know, il- having a short little story like that can really illustrate and and show your personality too. Uh, the next question, another technology one. How comfortable are you? with using technology like Zoom, Google Drive, etc. This was an interesting one. What does passion mean to you? And give an example of passion in action. That one really threw me off because there is absolutely no way that you are going to be able to prepare for that question. Um, How do you work to be culturally sensitive and inclusive. This is a really great way to highlight your work experience, to maybe share a story, to share the trainings that you've been to, the investments that you've made in yourself. That's a really great question to to highlight all of those different aspects. Next question is, what is a time you struggled to meet a deadline or the expectations set? Now here is one of those where, give me an example of a time that you struggled, right? So that that is a tricky one. And the the point with these, give me a, you know, an example of when you struggled, is to really show the lessons learned, how you respond to to conflict or how you respond to, to struggles. Are you gonna reach out for help? Are you just going to keep it quiet and stuff it under the rug and hope nobody notices? Don't do that. 
or are you going to ask for ask your coworkers for help? So they want to see how do you problem solve and how do you work under pressure? And then and they want to know too that you're also learning from these struggles. You're learning from these conflicts and you're making changes and you're growing. So this is a time to highlight if you're if you're humble, if you're open to learning. You know, as social workers, we always have to be open to learning because you are never, ever, ever going to know everything that you need to know. Our industry is always changing. Even if you are an expert in your niche, there are going to be new rules, new regulations, new culture shifts that impact your work, and you always, always need to be learning. The last question is, what question do you have for me? So this is really important because it's your opportunity to show the interviewer that you are really interested in the position, you're interested in the company, you're interested in them. So I will ask them at least three good questions. So the questions that I've asked in the past are, you know, what do you enjoy most about working for this company? What are the qualities of of a successful person in this position. Um, What else will I ask them? I'll ask them, where do they see this company going in three to five years? What types of opportunities for advancement are there? If you are interviewing for, if you're still working on your licensure hours, you could definitely take this time to explore what does clinical supervision look like? Who would be my clinical supervisor? How does that work? Hey, it's Catherine here. I hope you're enjoying this episode. We're going to take a quick break to listen to this ad from our sponsor. Do you want to make your own podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And this is the platform that I use because it makes it so simple to record and distribute your podcast all in one place using your cell phone. What you need to do is download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. This is also your opportunity to get to know what type of environment you would be working in because again, we want to make sure that it is a good fit for you as well as they wanna be sure that you're a good fit for them. So this is your time to really dive into questions around the environment. So I would ask things like, how do you support the mental wellness of your staff? Or what systems are in place for staff support? You could also ask, are there any additional job duties that this position has that are not included in the job description. This will help give you an overview of what you're actually looking at doing on a day-to-day basis. And that could be another question is, what does a typical day in this position look like? How much overtime would this position require? Because a lot of times people are working overtime and they don't tell you that it's required before you get hired. So you want to know how much overtime, if any, maybe there's not any, maybe the budget just doesn't allow, but if your salary especially, meaning that they can pay you until the quote, until the job is done, right? So definitely consider asking that. Um, What are the on-call expectations? Some roles have on-call, some don't. On-call can be your forever on-call, or it could be maybe you have to fill in for a weekend or evenings, but you want to know what is the expectations because you need to be able to be balanced in your personal life as well, and you want to make sure that it's a good fit for your schedule, your family, if you have kids, a spouse, other responsibilities, hobbies, you want to know what's going to be the expectation there. Another question to ask is what would a typical caseload look like and how is productivity measured? So again, depending on the job, this may or may not be applicable. Another question is what is your staff turnover? If it is really high, like 
three to six months, I would really, really <laughs> take that as a huge red flag that the staff turnover is that high. Um, the other questions that you can ask are what kind of opportunities for advancement does this organization offer? Are there any people who have advanced from this position up into another role or leadership? And this is a really great time to just kind of feel out, you know, how does the clinical supervision work? Who is the clinical supervisor? What is the setup on that? Is it individual or group or triadic with, with two other people? Um, you know, so these are some questions that are going to help guide you. I know that it's easier said than done to quote, you know, show up confidently and respond with confidence to interviews because they're so nerve wracking and it feels like you're being interrogated, especially during those group interviews. It can be really, really intimidating, but rest assured, no worries. You have got this. It takes practice. It really does. And if you're feeling like you just need more individualized attention, reach out to me. I am now offering coaching again. I was doing it before, took a break, and now I'm restarting up the coaching because I have received so many requests for career coaching and counseling. So I am opening up the calendar to people who want to book a free 15-minute consultation call because I really want to see, you know, what it is that you're hoping to get from coaching and if I would be the right person to do that for you and if we would be a good fit for each other. I want to make sure that you're getting served at the highest possible level. So the link is in the show notes. Definitely reach out to me if you are interested in private coaching or maybe a long-term mentorship type of relationship. We can definitely work things out and see see how we can help you, see how we can help you get that raise or the next job or some more money or a place that's closer to home so you don't have to commute, a place that's more in alignment with your skill sets now because what was working for you a year, two, three years ago, it may not be a good fit now. And a lot of times we outgrow those positions and maybe we're not even sure. Maybe we just want to see what's out there, but we haven't been in the job search in a long time and we need our resume revamped. We need our LinkedIn up to par. We need to learn how to get those connections. We need to learn how to, how to really dive in and effectively prepare for an interview. So I can help you with all of that and I am confident that I can definitely help you especially if you are looking to transition to medical social work. So I know the field of medical social work very, very well. I've been doing this for over 10 years. So definitely reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me five stars and write a, a short little note. It could even be, oh my gosh, this episode was so helpful or this podcast was amazing, anything like that. It just shows that there are people who listen and people who enjoy the podcast and it helps other people just like you find us and join our community. Lastly, if you just want to be in the know of what's going on with social work events, with new upcoming uh, happenings in the world of social work, with clinical tools, I will send out resources to the email list and I would love to have you on there. I would love to have you included so that you stay in the know. Uh, The link is in the show notes as well to join the email list. And that is all that I have for you, my friends. Definitely let's stay connected. Let me know that you listened to this episode. You can share it in your Instagram stories or on LinkedIn and give me a tag. I love to see who's listening. Until next week, take care. Bye. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Social Workers Rise. If you loved it, please open up your iTunes, tap the five stars, and leave a short note on why you love listening to the Social Workers Rise podcast. Also, if you want to share it on social media, I absolutely love it. You'll have me fangirling all over you. Take a screenshot, 
and share it and tag me at Social Workers Rise on Instagram and Facebook. Lastly, just want to leave a little bit of legal disclosure here that the information, opinions, and recommendations presented in the Social Workers Rise podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done so at your own risk. This podcast should not be used in place of professional advice, therapy, or clinical supervision. And with that, my friends, I'll talk to you next week.